Hello there, roguelike fans. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at something today. I don't have a lot of time. I think I'll probably uh, add this on in terms of release on a day when something else is already releasing because this will be a very short video. Um, I am looking at a game today that is a that is an utter classic. Uh, it is well known. It is spoken of widely in roguelike circles. And yet, until today, I have never had occasion to even look at it. Uh, because it is so widely spoken of, I had always assumed it was going to be something really big and epic. And it is cool and fun in its own way. I just saw the gentleman who created it talking. That's why I thought of it. I, I saw him talking on YouTube about uh, about the game at the roguelike uh, celebration last year. And what we're looking at today is called Robot Finds Kitten. Robo I'm playing it in... Uh, let me make sure I got this window open properly. Playing this in DOS, therefore DOS box. Robot Tilt 2. It's been uh, epically ported to a million different um, uh, frickin' places. Uh, this is kind of weird that this uh, this text is left here. It's not left here. That's interesting. Okay, I got rid of it. Did I? Can you see this? What the hell is going on? Yeah, that's exactly right. Is it? What the hell is going on? Damn it, guys. Sorry. There we go. All right. Uh, so, sorry, the recording here is a bit uh, a bit difficult to get to work. Okay. I don't know why. DOSBox is not easy to work with. All right. Uh, Robot Finds Kitten. Uh, as I said, I've heard it spoken of a million times. It was apparently made in 1997 by this gentleman, Leonard Richardson. I think the original game was made for DOS. It was part of why we're playing it. But it's also been ported more widely than any other roguelike probably ever. You can get a PSP port. You can get a Nintendo port. You can get a fucking Atari 2600 port. Um, apparently not a Windows port. Much to my surprise. I couldn't find one on the website. So... I'll include a link to where I found this, and if you can see a Windows port, hell, go for it. All right. In this game, you are robot. The hashtag. Your job is to find kitten. This task is complicated by the existence, existence spelled weird, of various things which are not kitten. Robot must touch items to determine if they are kitten or not. The game ends when robot finds kitten. Alternatively, you may end the game by hitting the escape key. See the documentation for more information. Press any key to start. We don't need to see the documentation. Trust me, I played it through. It's very simplistic. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's, you know, not, not my favorite style of game, but it's, uh, it's got its own unique quality. Okay, where are we? I'm going to get this mouse out of the way. We are the hashtag over there on the left. Uh, let's go find kitten. I'm using the arrow keys to move. It's the only keys I need to use. Bump into the thing to the south, whatever that U is with the apostrophe thing. Wait! This isn't the poker chip. You've been tricked. Damn you, Mendez! <laughs> I know that doesn't make any sense to you yet. Just a moldy loaf of bread. Looks like a power converter from Tashi Station. If you're any kind of Star Wars fan, you'll recognize what that's a reference to. Is it a Star Wars reference? I, I get that. What in blazes is this? I don't know. It's a fly on the wall. Hi, fly. So we are a robot literally wandering around these different items, and they're, they're all randomized in terms of what they look like. The color, the, what, what, what unique shape is representing this item. Our only job is to walk up and find the damn kitten, which means just bump into objects until you find it. That's the entirety of the game. Shoot. Thought it was kitten, but it was an exploded pen. Um, the fun of it... Well, I guess it comes from a, a the references. There's a lot of different references, and you might occasionally encounter one and be like, "Hey, I know what that's talking about." A brain cell. Oddly enough, it seems to be functioning. Or little jokes like that. Leonard Richardson is here asking people to lick him. That is the creator of this game. I don't know if asking people to lick him is a, a, a joke beyond the obvious weirdness of that statement. If it's a private thing that means something to him, could it be a big ugly bowling trophy? I guess it could be. It's a stupid mask fashioned after a beagle. I don't know what most of these things mean, to be perfectly honest with you. This is an anagram. Not really. Blup, 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 says the mud pot. Don't know what that means. It's nothing but a corrupted floppy. Coaster, anyone? It's scenery for waiting for Godot. Famous Beckett play. I directed a production of Endgame many years ago. Another Beckett play. A box of dancing mechanical pencils. They dance. They sing. We're down to like four objects. I think, I think there's only four objects we haven't looked at over here on the left of the screen. Uh, right off the bat, there's a little gray N to the, or maybe, maybe it's pie. I can't tell in this little window. Um, to the southwest that I instinctively thought that might be kitten. I wonder if it is. If it is, I'll be entertained by my own psychic phenomena. Sure hope we get some rain soon, says Farmer Joe. 
Daily Hunger Conditioner from Australasia. I know for a fact that that, uh, having just seen the gentleman who created this game talking about that, just so you know, so I can impart some level of interesting information about this game, um, he was looking at a shampoo bottle or conditioner bottle in his room. He thought he thinks it was from Australia, and he just switched some words around on the, on the bottle and uh, came up with that quote. It's a limbo bar. How low can you go? I, oh my god, I think it truly is. I think my, my psychic connection was right. I think this is it. It is. Look up at the top right corner. You found kitten. Way to go, robot. That's it. That's the game. <laughs> that is the entirety of the game. As you can see, there is no threat. There is no external challenge. There is There's no time limit. There's no, if you don't find it in X things, you lose. Uh, assuming you don't press escape to quit, there is no way to lose. Just walk around bumping into things until you find kitten. Um... As I said, this game is, is really preposterously popular. Um, a lot of people enjoy it. I mean, I guess there's kind of a a calming zen aspect to it, right? It's like, it's like the equivalent of a rock garden where, you know, you, you, you have that little shovel thing, you scrape around the rocks and the sand to just to rearrange them to meditate. I could see, you know, let's just do it again. I could see this being, a, you know, an interesting form of meditation. Let's see if my, uh, my psychic um, abilities kick in again. This is Kitten. No, oh, it's a toilet bowl. It's a charcoal briquette. I didn't know, obviously. It's a digital clock is stuck at 2.17 p.m. Uh, a section of glowing phosphor cells. Sing a song about radiation to you. <laughs> what in blazes is this? It's the instruction manual for a previous version of this game. There was an instruction manual? A box of dancing mechanical pencils. They dance a thing. An incredibly expensive mad about you collector place. <laughs> I used to love that show. Empty jewel boxes litter the landscape. It's a solitary vacuum tube. Not kitten, just a pack of Kool-Aid. It's an old Duke Ellington record. Particle Man does the things a particle can. It's some compromising photos of Babar the Elephant. <laughs> some very obscure references. Here, I checked the same thing twice. That should count as a failure. An automated robot liker. It smiles at you. <laughs> Dear robot, you've been personally selected to receive this Visa card. A digital clock. Oh, you've seen this before. I, like, as I, I'm going back to the same places. I'm a fool. What in blazes? I've seen all of these. I'm, I'm messing up. I must be the worst damned uh, freaking kitten finder in the world. Because I'm always finding it on my last one, apparently. It's an altar to the horse god. Pink? A forgotten telephone switchboard operator. As far as I can tell, we have two. It's either the white N or the blue backwards L. It's a stupid mask fashioned after a beagle. There we go. How am I that? That was literally the last one. Like, that alone has to be an accomplishment. To twice in a row guess wrong everything except for the one. That's that's a little fucked up and, and, and just statistically pretty impressive. That's it, guys. That's all I wanted to show you. Uh, that is obviously a very, very short uh, game. If you're interested, I'll include a link to where you can find Robot Finds Kitten. As I said, it's proliferated, proliferated widely. It is available on literally, like, every platform ever made with the possible exception of Windows. Um... And, you know, if you're just looking to totally chill with no uh, with no obstructions in your way, this this seems like the game for you. Um, not necessarily my style of game, but I can appreciate why why some people are really, really crazy about it. I also find the version number funny. Version 1.6 million... No. Yeah, 1.6 million point two. <laughs> All right. Play again? No. Okay, there we go. I'm gone. Have a good day, guys. Bye.